Well, it's time now to hear from two prominent Conservatives who have been publicly pushing for Andrew Scheer to step down since shortly after the election results. With me in the studio is Corey Tonight. He's the former Communications Director to Stephen Harper. And joining us from Florida is former Opposition Leader and Conservative MP John Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Nice to see you. All right, Corey, Corey Tonight, let me start with you. Um, why do you believe that Andrew Scheer decided to step down today? Well, I... I I think it's because uh, his position had become untenable. Uh, I, I think uh, he lacked a support base in the party that wanted to see him stick on. Uh, and uh, I also think there were, uh, were some not good stories that were, were on the verge of publication regarding uh, his use of, uh, of party money to, uh, uh, to uh, subsidize uh, uh, his, uh, his children's mm -hmm. private school education. Okay, Ms. Mr. Reynolds, we're going to dig into that. Uh, part of this story in just a moment. Mr. Reynolds, what's your reaction to, to Andrew Shear's decision to step down now? Well, you know, Andrew, being a speaker, and I was a speaker, as you know, in British Columbia, you learn to watch politics a little bit differently. And I think he's looked at the history of our party and the greatest divisions were when we had a leader who wouldn't step down when he should. And I think he, the, the pressure we put on, I remember the first time I talked to Corey about doing what we did with our uh, website. Uh, none of us were angry. We just wanted to see something happen earlier than it should happen. What most party members do, losing the last election, like Peter McKay said, was like missing an empty net. And uh, it was time to have a leadership race. Let's get on to the positive thinking things that come from a leadership race. We've got like, a lot of great people in our party, and now we're on a race to find the person to replace Trudeau in the next election. All right, let's come to some of that in a, in a few moments, too. But, uh, Corey, tonight, let me com come back to you on this whole issue of the tuition uh, the party putting up a top up for Andrew Scheer. The statement today from the party, from Dustin Van Boot, the executive director of the Conservative Party of Canada, says this. As is the normal practice for political parties, the party offered to reimburse some of the costs associated with being a national leader and relocating the family to Ottawa. Shortly after Mr. Scheer was elected leader, we had a meeting where I made a standard offer to cover costs associated with moving his family from Regina to Ottawa. That includes the differential in schooling costs between Regina and Ottawa. All proper procedures were followed and signed off on by the appropriate people. Why isn't that acceptable to you? Uh, well, I think there's a, a lot of uh, uh, weasel words in that statement. Uh, and Such as what? Uh, well, saying that this is a normal procedure. Uh, th there's nothing normal about uh, subsidizing uh, private school education. Uh, if you are a CEO of a bank, that isn't a perk that you get. Uh, there's nothing normal about that. What's normal if for reimbursement of a party leader are things that are related to the job of being party leader. So the largest thing that's reimbursed is generally travel costs mm -hmm. associated with party business. So say there's a fundraising event or you know a party event in uh, Vancouver or someplace on the other side of the country, the party would pick up the costs associated. But are there with anything the in the Conservative Party rules that that preclude this uh, from from being allowed? Well, I I, I I don't think there's a a rule against it, but I think the fact that it was hidden uh, and the fact that it's not being honestly spoken about right now is uh, because it would uh, not be acceptable to party members. You have to remember that most of the donors to the party donate less than $100, and that's real money for them. And they're giving that money to fund election campaigns for political work to try to defeat the Liberal government. They're not giving that money thinking it, they're going to be uh, subsidizing the lifestyle of a party leader. That's not an appropriate use of that money. Uh, and it's, uh, I think, something that uh, uh, is, uh, well, it's not, it's not appropriate and it's not easy to explain and not acceptable to party members. Mr. Reynolds, do you share that view? Is it wrong for Andrew Scheer to have been given by the executive director of the party this top up to help pay for his kids' schooling? The, the only thing I'll disagree with Corey on is quite normal for the Liberals. They've done this forever and a day. When I was leader of the opposition, uh, I was told certain expenses in the uh, home paid for by the party. Uh, when I wanted to fill the wine room, my kids paid the bill. I didn't believe that the taxpayer money should be used for this type of thing. I think it's wrong, and uh, those in the party who agreed to give it to Mr. Scheer, uh, we should have a talk with them. We're the Conservative Party. We're not the Liberals. We don't believe that the taxpayer owes us a living. We don't pay for the nannies. We don't pay for the wine. And but but have who's, government who's, money in the, who's in the wrong here? Andrew Scheer for accepting the money or the party for offering but, the money? Well, I, I think both, both are. are. Both are in the wrong, but, but he's gone. He's retired. And that's not the issue now. The issue is to select a leader who will run the party we need it to be, the way that we need to be run it. Uh, as I, I think to, to be effective uh, as a party leader, you have to uh, ask party members 
uh, for donations to fund the party's efforts. And there's a trust and integrity, uh, a sacred trust really, that has to, to, to be maintained there. And this is a violation of that. I think it also undermines our ability to be an effective opposition in the House of Commons. Uh, if, uh, if Andrew stays on as leader and we're trying to uh, bring up issues related to expense scandals or you know, things like the, the Prime Minister having gone for, a, uh, having accepted a, a, a vacation on the Aga Khan's private island, etc. If, if you are uh, you know, having inappropriate expenses funded for yourself, you really are, are uh, uh, you know, being a hypocrite if you're raising those issues uh, in the House against, uh, against the Prime Minister. Mr. Uh, Reynolds, you, you talked about looking forward here. So what, what should the party be looking for in, in the next leader? Well, the good news about this whole story is that every new leader candidate is going to be asked the question about party money and what the taxpayers should pay for. That's the good news. Uh, and what we should be looking for now is members of our party or those who maybe aren't even members of our party who would be a good candidate to lead this party into the next election against Mr. Trudeau or any other liberal leader, because they may dump him before the next election too. We always have to watch for that. Yeah, that does raise that question of the uncertainty of, of you think you're better off with a different leader than Andrew Scheer, even in a minority parliament where there's this you know, a certain tension around when the next vote might be called. Well, look, uh, you know, it would appear Andrew is choosing not to run in whatever this leadership race is. But as I've maintained uh, throughout this process, if Andrew wants to be the leader in the next election, there's, a, I think, an appropriate way uh, for him to, to do that or to have done that, and that would be put his leadership on the line and run against other candidates and may the best person win. Uh, that's the right way to go about doing it. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think the, 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 uh, the leadership race will, uh, I will make this prediction, it will involve some candidates that no one has spoken about. And I'm not saying that with some secret hidden list or something of people who are going to run. Mm -hmm. Just saying that to uh, really be in the poll position to be the next prime minister of this country, a G7 country, an amazing country with so much to offer, uh, people of accomplishment and credibility will step forward and want that job. And I'll be very interested to see who steps forward. I'll be very interested in the debate and the discussion of ideas that will come out of that process. And I know that John and I will be the first people after uh, that race is over, irrespective of, uh, of uh, who we support and we'll, we may support different people, we'll come together as a, as a party and we'll support whoever the, the membership uh, elects. Okay, let me give the final word to John Reynolds here. Mr. Reynolds, what, what's the number one, as the party moves forward here, what's the number one lesson you should have learned from the last election? Make sure we select the right leader. We have to uh, really work hard and uh, let's see who joins the race. Let's ask all the right questions and let's make sure that we come up with somebody who can win not only in Western Canada, but Eastern Canada, Central Canada. All right, John Reynolds uh, joining us from Florida. Good to talk to you, Mr. Reynolds. Nice to see you again. And Corey Tonight in studio. Appreciate your time with us. Thank you. Thank you.